Alright guys, so I'm back. Um, obviously you wouldn't be able to tell in the video unless I told you, but um, this is like my fourth attempt at trying to make a video to show you guys how to do this uh, because I've been having some trouble with the video camera. And um, you're catching me about a week after the fact, after I made that first video, and um, actually I'm already done mapping, as you can see. Um, I didn't feel like waiting that long, <laughs> so um, I just already lapped it. But no worries, I'm still going to show you how I got here. Um, I have the 1500 grit out right now, um, which is a really high grit um, that gets you a polish. So by showing you guys how to lap, it's not like I'm messing messing a lap or anything, so I have no problem showing you guys how to do the basic steps. Um, but since then, I've also lapped my CPU, Q9450, using the same exact process. It's kind of nice little shine going on right there. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to take you through the steps really quickly here. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need um, a piece of glass or a flat surface to lap on because you want a flat surface to overall to just make sure you have an even contact for your heat sink or your CPU or whatever. Um, you're going to need some tape, preferably painter's tape, um, to hold down the different bits of sandpaper. Um, in my case, since uh, this is all I had in my local Ace Hardware, I went up from 320 to 400 to 600 and to 1500. And the 1500 is solely just for that shine that you see that those both have, just to kind of get that nice little finishing touch. It's not necessary, but I just like to use it, because it's like if you're going to take the time to do this, you might as well take the time to make it look nice and pretty, too. So yeah, that's why I did that. Um, a lot of people will tell you, that you don't want to go below 400 grit when you're sanding or lapping your CPU or heat sink or whatever because they think it's too rough of a grit and it'll damage your CPU or whatever because it's just too dangerous and that's just not true. Um, a lot of people say that just because they don't want to damage their CPU by grinding it too far, but in reality, I mean, you really have to screw up bad to do that. As long as you do a couple of sets, just a couple, with some 320, on both the CPU and the heatsink, you'll make your life so much easier. Because I found that out the hard way, actually, and I did it on starting on 400 grit for both, and I ended up doing, seriously, probably, I lost count, probably 50 cents on each grit. Just one piece of sandpaper. I ended up using, like, three pieces of sandpaper for the lap. It was really um, true. I mean, literally, I was lapping for probably two days straight. I mean, that took way longer than it should have, and this guy probably took, like, two days. Um, which is again way longer than it should and one way to really help yourself out is to go with a little lower grit and just get all the you know the gunk off the top of the heat sink and uh, CPU and then focus on you know making it flat with the other 400, 600, 1500 grit but um, anyway so that's that um, and then for the end you're going to want some rubbing alcohol or I, in my case isopropyl to just kind of clean off the surface every now and then with the Q-tip or whatever and then you're going to need some dust off, just to get the dust or whatever, dust off um, the surface. Um, yeah, and then obviously you're going to need some thermal paste to apply afterwards. In my case, I'm going to use an Arctic Silver 5. Um, and then occasionally, as you saw in my previous video, you're just going to want to use a, um, well, a oh, a razor blade to kind of check for flatness every now and then, just see what kind of progress you're making. Um, so yeah, so we're going to get started. Let me take you through the steps. Um, so you're going to want to put your heat sink or whatever, your lapping, just right there. And in my, what I like to do um, to keep track of where I am is I'm just going to grab a marker, uh, in this case a Sharpie, and I'm just going to make a mark right there. I don't know if you can see that. You want a mark right there. And what that's for is that lets me know when I've done a full rotation because I'm going to lap this guy and I'm going to do a certain amount of sets. In my case, last time I probably did like a hundred sets, which is way more than it really should take, so don't worry, that's not how many I have to do. Um, but uh, the set would be 20 times like that, and then rotate it 90 degrees, 20 times, 90 degrees, 20 times, 90 degrees, 20 times, 90 degrees, and you're back. That's four, four times, and then you're back to your little knob set, so you know you've done a full set. And it just helps you keep track so that way you don't do more on one than the other, and it just helps keep it even. Um, the true is really a lot harder to lap than the CPU is, so if you lap your true first, the CPU will seem so much easier. 
because this is a big, heavy piece of metal, and it's just awkward to hold and push forward and backwards, and when you flip it, it's just really awkward, where the CPU is just you know, really, really fast. But, so I'm going to show you my technique that I developed after a week of lapping this stupid thing. Um, and that technique is, what you want to do, you're going to want to hold, when you're going this way, you're going to want to hold through the side right here with your fingers. You're going to have three fingers up here, and you use your thumb back here. And when you go out, it's important that you don't apply any pressure when you're going back and forth, because then you'll be grinding against the surface, and then you'll almost guarantee that you're not getting it even. You let the own um, surface that you're lapping, but its own weight carry itself, and then that'll ensure that it's perfectly flat when you're done. So with that said, like I said, you're going to do this, and you're just going to go out with your thumb, and then back. Thumb, back, thumb, back, thumb, back. And when you turn it, I'm going to put through here, like this, and we go out like this. Same thing, and do the thumb, back, thumb, back, thumb, back, and then turn the same process. So I'm going to do a quick set. Um, since I, like I said, I'm already done, I'm just going to do like five on each. Should give you an idea. But so, there we go. So, I'm going to start off. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Okay? And then if I rotate 90 degrees, put this guy in here, turn it forward so you can see it there. One, two, noticed, uh, one, a couple of problems you'll run into when you first start lapping this thing is when you're on the lower grits, it'll really be skipping around like a lot. It'll be, you know, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to screw it up, but it'll just really kind of just really buckle. And you want to avoid that as much as you can. So when you start off, just start off real nice and slow until you start seeing some copper as you do, and then you know it'll start sliding a little easier, then you can pick it up a little bit. But this guy is heavy, and it's really easy to make it buckle, especially when you're on this rotation, because it's awkward for your hand, and it just will slide and stop and skid really easily. So you just want to avoid that as much as possible. But it will happen, so when it happens, just don't freak out, but just avoid it. Um, so yeah, so that's how I left my true, and this is the result that I got. Um, yeah. So I'm going to try to see how well it worked out after I put it all back together. And um, hopefully I'll post a video on how that went. So I hope that helped, and I will talk to you guys later.